Good morning, YouTube Life Focus. So let's clarify a few things. I, comparing corn cobs to a briar pipe, uh, Jason Mouton, one of his comments was, this is ridiculous. Well, it really isn't ridiculous, but I understand where he's coming from. I happen to have a Jason Mouton, Mouton pipe, and I'll tell you where really artisan pipes shine above some other pipes is the uh, stem work. Jason's stem work is phenomenal. They just feel awesome in your mouth. It's uh, words cannot describe it. You'd have to try it. That being said, for people that put softy bits, that doesn't matter. Um, the stem work um, is basically you got a softy bit over whatever's there. Um, and that was my point with the blind taste test. That really is the way, if the purist and advocates for briar pipes smoke better, or artisan pipes smoke better, that would be the test. I mean, really, you're blindfolded. It can be done. Uh, you'd have to have you know, heavy le leather gloves for the guy to wear so he can't feel the contours of the pipe or nothing. Because feel means a lot. Now, interesting enough, in one of the comments, a blind guy responded, and... That was an interesting, uh, it sparked some interest in my brain because I bet you a blind guy has a better chance of telling what pipe he's smoking because his senses are elevated from being blind. His smell is probably more enhanced, his feel, uh, even though if you use gloves, um, he's more in tune, being he can't see, to nuances that the rest of us might take for granted. So it would be a really interesting test, and um, I, I, I bet you most would not agree to it because I think they'd be uncertain of the outcome, and they feel um, like it hurt, did more of a disservice to prove their point. Um, but the bottom line is, I mean, listen, buy what you like. I have a I have Simon pipes, I have Jason Wouton pipes, I have um, uh, Doran pipes, all the YouTubers basically that make pipes, I have a pipe from them, because I like to support people that you see. Um, so I have no real, either way, I could care less what people think about what pipes better. Um, I like them all. I mean, I really don't, I have corn cobs, I really don't like them, and I don't know why I don't like them, they smoke okay, it's just that, there's something about them that I just don't care for, you know, uh, their stems suck as far as that goes, but you can get the forever stems, which are better, um, I just, there's something about a corn cob that I don't, it doesn't appeal to me, it just, um, Nothing against anybody that smokes them and likes them. It's just, and I have them, It's and they smoke good. I mean, no no question about it. But, and probably for a beginner, it is the pipe to pick because it is a little more forgiving in the moisture department if you don't use a filter. Um, but, um, you know, it's, and then you're going to get the Meerschaum group that thinks Meerschaum smokes superior to anything. You know, so the bottom line is there's really no way to gauge. It's like saying McDonald's is better than Burger King. Well, to somebody it is, but to somebody else, McDonald's is not good. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, it's a subjective thing. It's like that's why there's so many brands of cereal, let's face it, and so many brands of coffee and so many different, because everybody has a different opinion on what they like and some of it's mind over matter, I think. Um, you know, interesting thing with coffee, I had a, a good friend that worked um, in air conditioning and heating, and he had a call in a coffee uh, place that manufactures coffee. And he laughed because, I don't know if many of you remember, there was a brand called U-Ban. I don't know if it's around anymore. I don't remember seeing it. And it was coming off the same line as a Maxwell House, and there was four other brands, all the same coffee coming off the same line in different cans. 
identical coffee in each can, but they were dis distributed in a different container, but all the same. So if you bought any of those four brands, it's the same exact um, uh, coffee. Now recently, I happen to like A&W root beer, and I tend to drink diet soda. I know it's not the best thing to be drinking in the world, but nonetheless, diet root beer A&W. So now A&W's changed it from diet to zero. It says a lot of people are doing that. It's a play on words. When I bought the bottle that said zero, I could swear that don't taste the same as diet. You couldn't tell me different. So I kept buying the bottle that said zero, and I said, this don't taste the same to me. And I did a little research, and I went to A&W, and there was a comment section, and somebody from A&W wrote, somebody said the same thing I said, it don't taste the same. And the guy says, the exact same soda, I work at the place that it was when it was diet. Now, I assume he's telling me the truth, but now is it mind over matter, or am I really picking up something that they did change and they're not saying? So, the same thing could be said for a pipe. It's subjective. And if you spend $300 for a pipe, you want to believe that that pipe's going to smoke better than a $50 pipe. And I think when you go in with that mindset, to you, it might smoke. Wow, this is really a premium smoke. And it, not to say it's not a premium smoke, but it's probably not that much different than from a $50 pipe. Because you know, you're buying, you know, if somebody puts a real silver band or a real gold band, that has nothing to do with how it smokes. It's, it's an ornament. A beautiful hand sanded stem that somebody took a lot of work to make the stem shiny with the perfect bend and smooth edges. That takes time. You're paying for that. That's not really reflective of a tasting of the tobacco. So like I said before, you buy those project pipes that come as a kit. They're pre-drilled. All you got to do is sand them to your shape. If you did nothing, took it out of the box and smoked it, the tobacco would taste the same once you break it in. Uh, and that's another thing. When we talk about pipe tobacco tasting, it's on a pipe that's been broken in, not a new pipe. We know new pipes have need time to uh, come around. So we're talking about pipes that have been smoked already and they built up a base cake in it. And... Um, once that happens on any pipe you own, they're very similar. I, I mean, shape, I think, plays a role. I've been a d bunch of tests, I don't know if many of you remember, with filters and, and uh, temperature. And shape definitely plays a major role. But again, I think it's more about uh, you know, uh, mathematics and the height of the bowl. The length of the bowl, the length of the stem, it all plays a role. And But it's not to, anyway, the point of this and what I'm saying is it's not to disparage anybody that makes pipes and tries to get the best money they can for them, of course. You know, if I build uh, my work, I rebuild the transmission, I want to get the best possible money out of it I can. But I still need to be competitive. So you have the guys, and like I said before, you have to be stupid not to target the people that are in the six-figure area. And if you're dealing with those people, they have the sources and the income to think nothing of paying for five or six hundred dollar pipe. Nothing. So naturally, that's the market market to target. You know, if you make a hundred dollar pipe. You need six people to make what you can off of one guy, even though the $600 pipe took you longer. Um, but you know what I'm saying. It's it's uh, The more money you can get, the less pipes you need to sell. 
to make a living. So why not cater to the higher end? But I think any pipe maker, if I was going to be in the pipe making business, I personally would follow Savinelli's model. And I would make a pipe for anybody. So in other words, I'd have uh, a cheaper line shop pipe. I'd have a middle of the road pipe. And then when you get really phenomenal briar and phenomenal stems, I'd have the higher end pipe. And this way you've got a broad spectrum. It's still a pipe made by the maker, but it fits every category. That's my opinion, because why not? Because then you broaden your customer base, and anybody can obtain your pipe and have something made by you. And I think that's the goal of any maker, I would think. But maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, uh, I have nothing against anybody that's trying to get $1,000 for a pipe or $2 for a pipe. More power to you. And it's not to dismiss your work or your... Uh, but... You have to come to the realization that at the end of the day, it's a pipe, it's a pipe, it's a pipe. And if the draft hole and everything's as it should be for a pipe to smoke well, any pipe, whether it's $10 basket pipe or $1,000, whatever, it's going to smoke good. That's my opinion, and that's an opinion from somebody that has a lot of pipes and I smoke a lot of different pipes and I'll be damned I would fail that blindfold test and if I'm wrong then please somebody take up my offer on that blind taste test and I'd be shocked absolutely shocked assuming it wasn't fixed that a guy can pick out what pipe he's smoking it's just me Anyway, be well, stay safe, and smoke whatever you like.